Hi, it's Char. Welcome back to my channel, Crafting at the Storm. Today I have some really unique and fun spring DIYs using mostly Dollar Tree items. However, I did find a thrift item that I wanted to flip and make into a unique Easter piece. I had a lot of fun making these projects and I hope one of them inspires you. Let's get crafting. You decided to join me, huh? For this project, I am going to use this plastic tablecloth that I got from the 99 cent only store. It's a really beautiful green gingham pattern. This is a large tablecloth. It has a lot of material to it. It's also very thin. I'm only gonna use a small portion of it. I will have so much left. I'm just gonna cut off a chunk to use right now and put the rest away. I'm just going to fold it in half so I can get us um, a good even triangle banner shape. I'm going to leave a little edge at the top because I want to have a space where we're going to thread the jute twine through. So that's my larger banner piece and then I'm going to make a smaller one. I don't know which one I want to use. So I wanted to have the choice between the two sizes. I took both of my banner pieces and um, traced them out on some green cardstock I had. And then I'm just gonna cut some out so I can make them a little more substantial. This um, plastic tablecloth is very, very, very thin. So now I'm just adding some glue to that cardstock and I'm gonna smooth it out so I get a good smooth, even coat. And then I'm just gonna lay the tablecloth piece over the top of it and smooth it down. You could use white cardstock as well. I just happened to have this green and it matched. Now I'm gonna take and do uh, a hole punch on each side. I just went ahead and hole punched one um, where I thought I needed it and then I held the rest of them up and used it as a template. I did cut out some bunnies with some Dollar Tree vinyl from my Cricut. These would also be very easy to cut out of paper. It's just a little bunny silhouette. And then I glued a bunny tail on. I do have to say I have to be I had to be very careful with my glue gun. I did touch the tip of it to this um, plastic tablecloth in one spot and got a little melted spot on it. Next, I took some carrots from Dollar Tree. They come in a pack of four. They're a little bit larger carrots. And so I used one whole pack and then one carrot that I had left from another pack. I did end up using two of the larger triangles and then four of the smaller. And so I used a combination of different sizes. I poked a hole through the carrot. It's just styrofoam inside. I poked it with a very sharp um, just poking tool and then I got a little bit larger um, metal tool that I had and I poked that through 
and then I got the largest one that I needed and that's uh, a knitting needle. And I poked that through and just gradually made that hole bigger and that jute twine would fit through it. I also strung on some wood beads in between. Now I'm just gonna take my hot glue gun and do a little dab of hot glue to keep everything in place. I'm putting the hot glue on the beads and on the carrots, but I do end up flipping the triangle pennants over and just putting tape on the back of those to keep those from sliding. Just clear scotch tape. And that keeps everything in place and lets me position everything equally. Very easy project. For this DIY, I found this wonderful metal wire mesh basket at a local thrift store it I paid dollar fifty for it it was I believe three dollars half price so I just took the uh, little ribbon that was on it off and I am going to use some jute twine and weave around this basket I used some substantial um, thicker jute twine from Home Depot um, that isn't as thin as the one uh, the twine from Dollar Tree also it's a little more kind of rustic and rugged looking so um, it really went with um, the idea of looking like a basket weave I'm just taking um, pieces that I know will cover the sides and I'm gluing them to the inside of the basket and just making sure I have the same amount of pieces on each side. Now I'm gonna glue uh, two pieces together and, um, and then I'm gonna glue that onto the side and twist it and that's what's going to cover the handle. So it has a little bit of a design on it. I wanted to glue this down first so that as I was weaving around the basket, it would cover up the end pieces for me. I must say this glue, um, whatever the wire basket is, the glue held onto it wonderfully. It was very easy to, to glue on top of and it kind of had little edges to it. so. It really made this project very easy. So I'm just continuing to wrap it and um, to twist those two twines together and cover that handle. Next, I'm gonna take a piece and go around the edge because I realized once I start wrapping those small pieces over the edge, um, you'll still be able to see that very top edge of that basket and I don't want you to be able to see in between those twines and see the metal. So I'm gonna go ahead and go around it with one piece to cover it up. And I'm gonna do that before I start wrapping those around because otherwise it won't be an even flat surface once I start wrapping those twine pieces around. And I'm just gonna go around the entire edge here. And cover that all up so I, my goal is to not be able to see the metal at all once I do that now I'm ready to start my piece that's gonna wrap around the basket and have those short pieces come over and and weave over and under so I'm just finishing up that top row to cover up and I'll um, start on the side right here. So I'm just gluing one, one a strand down 
and then you can see I'm going to go over one strand and under another strand or I'm gonna take the strand and go under the long strand and go over I'm just weaving it back and forth I will say the first two rows were the most difficult um, just because the strands wanted to still kind of stand up straight. But once the second row was on, um, all of those side strands were held in place better. As I go around the basket, every time I come to a corner, I put a little bit of glue to also help kind of hold those pieces down and in place. So I'm just going to add a little, just a little touch of glue on the side. And then I'm just going to continue to go over and under and over and under. On my next loop round, I just want to make sure that the strands that went over the top of this piece go under this time just so it makes that weave pattern. Right about here is where I realized an extra hand would be great or something else. So I decided to get some um, painter's tape and kind of hold that down. It didn't do a great, great job just because, you know, jute twine is, it's difficult um, because it's kind of rough, but it did help kind of hold those down a little bit. And like I said, after the first two rows, I didn't have too much of a problem. So I just kind of took some little random pieces of, of tape to help hold those in place. And that, that kind of helped a little bit. I felt at a couple of points like I needed at least two more hands. Again, you can just take your twine and wrap it around your basket um, you don't have to weave. That would probably be an easier project, but I wanted to kind of get that basket look for my Easter basket. Once I got down a little further and got some rows in, I just kind of took and slid them up just to make sure everything was, was kind of snug. And I just continued around the basket. When I got to the end, I just took some glue around the very edge and just wrapped those pieces right over the edge to the bottom. It, uh, it took some time, but it was actually pretty easy. And I just made sure I used a good amount of glue to really hold those pieces down on the bottom and just wrapped the twine over. Once I have those all glued down and over and good and solid, then I'm just gonna trim off those, those pieces so that I don't have, so I have an even surface for the basket to sit on. And I just kind of trim all of those off. And the side of the basket actually kind of has a little bit of a lip, so the edges sit a little um, lower than the middle of the basket, so it ended up being very perfect to be able to weave on. Trim all of those away and then um, that way it's all nice and even on the bottom it will sit good. Now I decided I wanted to cover the inside pieces with one strand just to make sure that way they don't start to unravel or, or pull up on the inside. So I went inside with one piece just going over the top of the pieces that I glued in there to finish it off a little bit, make it good, look good and even, and uh, make sure it's sturdy. So I just wrapped a strand around the very inside. I didn't worry about the bottom inside of the basket because I knew I was going to put things inside of it um, anytime I used it for decoration, so I didn't worry about the inside inside of the basket but on the outside I did go ahead and cut a piece of felt and just glue around the edges 
I glued one side and got made sure that was stuck down good and then I pulled it up and and continued sometimes if I try and glue all of it at once the glue ends up not quite as hot and won't stick as good so I don't get everything stuck down as well sorry I went out of frame quite a bit but I just went around the edge with hot glue and glued that felt piece down And that finished the bottom off very nice. Now the last thing I'm gonna do on here is I decided that the inside of the handle, um, a lot of the silver still showed. So I went ahead and took a piece and it kind of just slid into this slot that the handle ended up having on the inside and I just covered the inside of it with more twine. Now I'm using some Spanish moss in it and I have some styrofoam eggs that I painted and so I wanted to put those in there. I tried to get four to fit. Ultimately, only three will fit in there. <laughs> and these are the little mini eggs. It's a very small basket. I made um, just a little uh, orange gingham bow to put on the side and once I put the orange bow on, um, I could tell I didn't want the purple and orange egg in there so I ended up just using the other three eggs and I just tacked that bow onto the side and set the eggs in I'll give up on four in a minute and that's it it came out so cute and um, it really is pretty sturdy I was thinking um, maybe one of those office supply wire mesh cups, pencil cups would work good. Just came out so cute. I love it. On this project, I took a Christmas box picture it's kind of what I call them I know I got it at an after Christmas sale from the 99 cent store so I think I paid a quarter for it it had a little bit of glitter so I'm going to sand that off as much as I possibly can everywhere where it was a red stripe had some glitter on it and I got it pretty smooth and kind of cleaned it up a little bit Just made sure it was good and smooth. Now I'm gonna take some Waverly chalk paint in Elephant, I believe is the color. And I must say I'm a little more out of my comfort zone with this particular project. It's a little more modern looking, but it's something different. Um, it's not distressed, which is something I do with just about everything, but I had fun. Now, I had a couple of packages of these little bunnies from Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to make sure that they all look good. Part of them will not be colored, so I want to make sure there's no burn marks on it or anything. I also kind of taped out my shape so I knew exactly how many, I could see exactly how many were going to fit on my sign, and um you know, make sure I didn't get any discolored ones. Now I just put a piece of painter's tape on half of the bunny, and I'm gonna use these pastel colors um, from, most of them I think are folk art or Americana. And just some nice uh, Easter spring colors. And I am, first, actually I first put a layer of Mod Podge down, so that way I would get a good clean line. Um, and now I'm going to go in with that paint and paint on top of that. Um, I did the Mod Podge just because I wasn't doing a layer of paint. Otherwise, I would say whatever your original color is, do a, uh, a layer after you put the tape down. I was able to do two of each color. And um, I did change the pink out for a little lighter pastel pink. That other pink was just a little bit too bright for me. 
And now I'm going to finish my bunnies up. And for the middle bunny, I decided to do a silver bunny just because it was kind of by itself. You'll see I painted it on this side. Um, I chose to flip it over later. You'll see it's going to be facing the other direction. Now I went around the edges and I kind of liked having that um, dark edge. So I went back over with a Sharpie and kind of cleaned up anywhere where I had paint. And I just lined up my colors the way I wanted to and glued them down after I kind of had them in place so I knew where they'd be even. Now you can see I flipped that silver bunny over and that's my finished piece. Very simple, very easy, kind of modern looking, a little different, but I like it. If you liked these crafts, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to my channel. Let me know in the comments which one you liked the most. And as always, keep crafting. Bye-bye.